Hello and welcome. If you just want to take an EPS file, an embedded postscript file, and just drag and drop it into Inkscape, and you want it to just work, then you have come to the right place. On Windows, by default, this is impossible. You will get a failed to load the requested file error, or maybe some other error. Feel free to write in the comments of this video what kind of error you get. So, how do we fix this? I will show you. All you need for this to work is GhostScript. It will allow Inkscape to import EPS files. Simply go to the GhostScript download page, you can find a link in the description of this video, and on that page download for your Windows version. Just check whether it's 32 or 64 bit. And then just press the file, and the download will start. A file similar to this will download, and you can double click it to run it if you have the rights. But I personally prefer to not do that and instead right click it and use 7-zip, which you need to install first or download first, and extract as if it were a zip file. Simply accept yes. Now that we extracted this without installing it, we can mess things up in here. So let's just rename the bin folder to gs and go into lib, select all, cut, go to the gs folder which we just renamed and paste. Everything else other than the GS folder we can delete. This GS folder I like to simply move to C. And that was all of step one. And now we need to change environment variables, which will require administrator rights. For that, we simply press the Windows key and type environment. Here we pick edit with system environment variables. Alternatively, we can press Windows and R and write system properties add advanced. This will open the same window. In system properties we click environment variables at the bottom and now we need to find the path system variable and edit it. If you have this text view you need to go to the end and type semicolon c colon backslash gs and then just press enter or press ok. But we're gonna use this new interface. We're gonna again edit it and just create a new one. And it's the same, c colon backslash gs. And that is it. And if we press OK, and OK, and OK, and if we again start Inkscape, we now can simply drag in an EPS file and you will get this dialog box asking you for some settings and you can simply press OK. And even though this nearly took 20 seconds, which I just skipped, you can now finally import EPS files on Windows and Inkscape. And this seems to be the only proper way currently. While I keep explaining alternatives, please write in the comments if you know of any other ways to get an EPS into Inkscape on Windows, of course. There is a software called ps to edit which seems to do a similar thing, but it only has a setup download for Windows. So you will need, again, to have the rights to run it. And you, this time you cannot just unzip it with 7-zip. That doesn't work with this software, unfortunately. Also, this is a command line application which you will have to use manually. And still it seems to fail. So as sad as it makes me to say that, I can only recommend online conversion software, unfortunately, which is proprietary and will be able to read your files and are completely not trustworthy because you send your files into the web and expect no harm to happen to them, but if the files can be just made public, then it's no big problem, I suppose, except you need to be online and stuff. There's Cloud Convert, there's PDF Aid, there's Zamzar, and when using Cloud Convert to convert to SVG, then I'm happy to report that it actually works. Here you go. PDFAid.com allows you to convert to PDF, but all I got so far is an error, so maybe not use that. Zamzar allows you to convert to PDF, but requires an email address. So I'm just going to use 10 minute mail. But either they don't like 10 minute mail or they just take too long. I didn't receive an update. So for now, I'm afraid there's only one option if you have no admin rights on your computer. So the situation is quite problematic. Hopefully in the future, Inkscape will allow to use an external ghost script without having to install it and without having to have it in the system path. But for now, 
the only option is to really mingle with your system settings. In any case, I hope this helped. Please subscribe for more tips in the future like this. And please give this video a like if it helped at all. If you still have any questions, write in the comments. See you next time. Ciao!